Ane Yong Haseyo. It is a pleasure for me to be back in Korea. I have been coming to Korea for a quarter of a century since the Olympic Games, actually, in here in this Olympic Park. And I have seen an incredible development of Korea in the last uh, quarter of a century. And, and I think the next quarter of a century will be even more incredible for Korea and for the whole world. This is becoming popular now because even magazines like Time magazine published an article about the year 2045, when we expect is the last time when the singularity should happen. It could happen earlier in 2029, but the latest time is 2045. And so what is the singularity? There is a book by a scientist from MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is also my alma mater in Massachusetts, who wrote this very famous book, The Singularity is Near, talking about the computing power doubling every two years and the price being reduced by half. This has been going on for half a century, and it will continue going on every time computers are more and more powerful and all different kinds of technology. So the technological singularity is defined as a moment when technology changes so fast that if humans don't improve themselves, they will not be able to follow technology. I have a shorter definition, which is the technological singularity is the time when artificial intelligence reaches human intelligence level. And that, I repeat, will happen between 2029 and 2045. Since some people here are too young, you have not seen how computers have evolved, so I want to show you this quickly. Uh, Forty years ago, these were the computer memories used. These are called the IBM punch cards. This has 10 rows times 100 columns, so this is about one kilobyte of memory, one kilobyte. Uh, a few years later, the first electromagnetic memories were invented. This is eight inches big, and it is also 1K. 30 years ago. 20 years ago, we went to this smaller, uh, five and a quarter inches, that has 512K of memory. Later, we have this that you probably all have used, uh, the floppy disk of about um, three and a half inches and um, 1.4 megabytes. Today, you can buy thumb drives like this one, which has over 100 gigabytes, gigabytes. So look at what has happened in 30 years. We have gone from 1K to hundreds of gigas. This is hundreds of million times more powerful. So this is like garbage today. This is garbage. But what do you think is going to happen in the next 20 years? You will remember me, and you will remember the garbage. But this will be the garbage in 20 years. We will have computers so powerful that they will have more transistors than the human brain has neurons. And that is the time of the technological singularity between 2029 and 2045. And actually, some people are afraid because that is the last inventions that humans will make. Because then we will have an intelligence higher than human intelligence. This is happening in all sciences, not only in information technology. So let me show you, for example, what is happening in biotechnology. And I'm going to show you my DNA, my human genome. This is just beginning to be commercialized. I was one of the first people who sequenced my human genome four years ago. And uh, several companies are doing that. If you see this is me, it says um, my name, Jose Cordero, on the top right. And it says the diseases I will have according to my genome. It says how I am, the color of my eyes, the color of my hair, according to my genome. All of you will have your genome sequenced in no more than 10 years, all of you. And once you sequence your genome, you will know what is the color of your eyes, in case that you didn't know it. And you will know which disease you might die of, but in order to, abo to avoid dying of that disease, because we will cure the diseases, we will prevent all diseases. You remember here of the garbage moving so fast? Well, let me show you, this is biotech. This is a gene chip. This is the chip to sequence the genome. This will cost $10 in 10 years, and everybody will sequence their genome. And you will know 
the color of your eyes, and you will know what you might die of in the future to avoid it. The technologies of the future are going to be magical. They are going to look like impossible things. Let's review some of these technologies from the past. 30 years ago, there were no personal computers. 20 years ago, mobile telephones were beginning. 10 years ago, Google was just a small company in California. So what is going to happen in 10, 20, 30 years? Incredible things, impossible things, magical things. One of the most incredible things is that we are going to control the aging process, and we are going to have immortal cells. This is one of the most revolutionary changes in medicine and in the history of humanity. We are going to see the death of death in the next 30 years. But human beings are complex. We have three gigabytes of genetic material, three gigabytes. That sounds like a lot, but it is not really that much. If you remember, you can buy today a pen drive of 128 gigabytes. Let's assume this is 128 gigabytes, and the human genome is three gigabytes. How many people can you fit here? You can fit 42.6 human genomes here. That is the complexity of the human hardware, three gigabytes. Now let me show you the complexity of the human software. And this has to do with the brain. The brain is the most complex organ in the body, and the brain is the most complex structure in the known universe. We don't know anything more complex than a brain today. And actually, we are very similar to chimpanzees. We are 99% equal to the chimpanzee, 99% and 90% equal to the genome of a mouse. And this you will do in biology in 10 years. You will sequence the genome of a mouse and the genome of a chimpanzee, and you will see that we are 99% equal to the chimpanzee. We are only 1% above a chimpanzee. Can you imagine now a new artificial being 1% above humans, or 10% above humans? or 100% above humans, or 1,000% above humans? And the answer is that there is no limit to what we will create. We will create very advanced life forms. Going back to artificial brains, in Japan, they are working at Riken Brain Institute on creating the equivalent of artificial brains. And they hope that by the year 2018, they will have the first, more or less, equivalent artificial brains to humans. So if someone here doesn't have a brain, no problem. Just save some money and go to Japan and buy a new brain in 2018. And we will connect our brains to computers. In fact, here there are some companies like Emotive, another one called NeuroSky, which I use, and my students also at Singularity University, they use these devices, which is a mind reader. You can read all your brain impulses from the frontal lobe of your brain. This is the beginning of computer-to-brain interface. And soon we will have brain-to-brain -brain direct communication. This is only beginning. We will connect ourselves to robots. And as you saw in the Olympic Games, this is the first human cyborg athlete. This is only the beginning of the human-machine civilization. We will see many more of this in the next Olympic Games. We will merge with the machines and we will cure all the diseases. All of the diseases we expect to cure in 20 to 30 years, thanks to genomic treatment. All of those diseases, all of them, all of them, all of them, including aging. We will kill death. We will see the death of death. You young people here, you are part of the first human immortal generation. Now I know this is the Chinese word for crisis. And I was told the first character means danger, but the second character means opportunity. So we live in a world of crisis, but let's not see only the danger. Let's focus on the opportunity, because the world of the future is the most incredible possibility for humanity and for Korea. Gangsa Hamnidam.